So now that we kind of have an idea of their journey, let's talk about from lead to appointment. So one of the things that I like to um, touch on, um, does anybody know generally how many times they're reaching out to somebody in their uh, in their follow-up boss before they give up on them? And you get, probably you don't know, but does anybody have a guess of how many times you maybe reached out before you're like, eh, they're dead. I, I don't care about them anymore. But yeah, what? Do, how many times do you think, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm so let's say 10. So let's say 10. So I've I've either called, emailed, uh, outreached to them 10 times. At 10 times, am I thinking, okay, I'm done? I'm seeing some head nods. 20 something times. Okay. Any other answers? Some of you, it's like two or three times, yeah. which is okay. We can be honest. It's all right. I was gonna say the average is actually a lot lower. We can we can be real. Four or five. Ooh, Ash is on it. We love it. 12. Okay, so we're kind of across the board. So um, we have a ton of data that we've um, collected from call action and from, um, from follow-up boss. So it is taking an average right now of 23 outbound attempts to get a response, not an appointment, not a uh, yes, a listing appointment, or I'm ready to meet a just a response, yes or no, screw you, hello, who is this, just a response. So if you have any less than your outbound attempts in the 20s, you have probably not given enough outreach. And I know that seems like a lot, but um, with updated phone carrier laws, with the amount of email spam that people get, um, I'm sure all of you guys are getting calls from random numbers all day. It's become harder to reach people, which means uh, for us, we also have to pivot and we have to put in more work to, to make sure that we're hitting what we need to hit. So all of your attempts for your leads, for your flex, for any leads that you have, whether honestly, whether it's a team lead or something else, you should have at least 20, probably at least 25 outbound attempts before you say, okay, this person's bad. So if you don't, you're probably archiving people too soon. Yeah, Lexi. Question. If we do something like work in Aztec game, which I know you've spent a fortune to be there, um, if someone says, I just want the cooler, do you really want us to contact them 23 times? If they say, what's the value of homes in my neighborhood? Or what's the value of my home? Absolutely, I get it. But do you want us to follow up with those people 23 times? No, so this, the great question. So this is more just to get an answer. So a lot of times, for example, I'll see if you're just looking at our team's follow-up boss as a whole, and you can see like average contact attempts per lead your average for you should be at least in the 20s before you've marked somebody archive is all I'm saying. If they've already given you, uh, you've disqualified them. They fill out a form or they do, you know, through the QR code. And if they only checked off, I just want a cooler and they have not ever, you know, you know, like, do we call them 23 times? No, or I wouldn't check off. I'm interested in the neighborhood. Absolutely. I would just call until they scream at me and hang up. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Use your best judgment. Sometimes those people will also put that out, but because they don't want you to call, they're just thinking, oh, well, if I fill out this one, I'm not, that's what I would do. If I was at a thing and that I was like, oh, if I just fill this out, no stranger's going to call me. Cool. I'm going to say that even if I had an intent maybe to buy. So I still would reach out to them until they tell you, hey, I'm not interested. Cool. At that point, you don't need to keep hammering them. This is more about contact attempts to response rather than hammer these people who aren't interested. It just means if you haven't heard from them yet and you've reached out less than 23 times, you probably haven't reached out enough is all I'm saying. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Um, so just really quick on encouragement on that. Um, the other day I went through a list of maybe 50, 60 I just want a cooler um, calls from the Aztec game. And out of the people I connected with, I only got one screw you and about four people who were like, I'm so happy you called. Can we continue talking um, and, and setting appointments with them? So um, it's natural instinct to just check, don't bother me, but um, it turned out really well for me. So definitely call through those people. Love it here. No, oh, it's okay. You get 10 points. You get 10 points for hitting me. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So that just means make sure take and take a look at this. I can show you guys too on my next huddle, or I can post a loom for how you see where you're at with your averages and FUB. This is data that's available to you guys. Joel. Oh man. It's okay. Let's see. We got higher ceilings in here. Nice. Um, 
two questions. Not not that anyone would ever um, would ever block my number because everyone enjoys talking to me. But if someone did block Matt's number, how, is there is there any way to know that our number has been blocked to a certain person? Uh I believe it will tell you if you text them in FUB. I can confirm that for you. I don't think yeah, you can know. Like I don't block. I think it'll turn red as kind of like a bad phone number. Will okay. I'm pretty sure that's what will happen when and it's you blocked. Get new phone. <laughs> <laughs> you can never catch me. Don't keep up. <laughs> kind of more broadly, will they notify us if our if we ever get flagged as a spam number? Um, will they will FUB? notify us of that i believe they're working on an update to be more proactive in the past they hadn't and we had to reach out to them but i'm pretty sure that's uh if you guys are on my huddle about stuff that they're working on i'm pretty sure that's that's something that they're working on and i can confirm that with with kyler cool thanks that was close it's okay um i'm pretty sure you can contact your phone provider and let them know to make sure that your number is not flagged as potential spam Mm -hmm. Correct. That's kind of one option to start with. Oh, okay. Cool. Yes. All right. Next thing I want to hit on just to keep us moving. Um, so staging importance. Another thing so um, that I've noticed is a lot of you guys have had incredible calls. You have amazing rapport. You're doing everything right. There's still a ton of you who are leaving hot leads in stage lead, like stuff that you've talked to, people that you've that you can clearly tell in the profile like once in a while i'll just do a random spot check to see how are we doing how, how are we doing as a whole uh what does our fub look like there are a ton of you who just have all of these it, you're crushing it you're obviously being a great agent for these people you have a lot of rapport and it's left in stage lead does anybody know why that's a huge issue and why you're shooting yourself in the foot if you do that yes it's going to disappear after uh 10 days i believe so if you have it as stage lead, lead means that I ha I don't know their when or why I haven't contacted them. So follow up boss does not, can't delineate, oh, just because they've talked to them, I'm gonna stage them for you. Um, staging is so important because it will help keep them in the right spot. The coolest thing about the CRM that we use, the coolest thing about FUB is that you don't have to wonder, oh, I need to call this person at this time. They will just show up in your segments and you just dial. So if you mark them as hot, A, that says, okay, I need to remind this agent to call them every week. So I'm going to put them back in their hot segment every week. It's just going to be on a cycle. If you don't do that and you have all this great conversation, it's just going to fall out of your segments and you're going to have to manually remember their name and find them and follow up boss to contact them again. So if you are somebody who feels like you're not doing this every time, this is a huge thing that you can do to just uh, incredibly leverage yourself to have more business is just remember to click the, the um, the stage, super easy. Um, huge thing that you can do to not let people fall through the cracks. The last thing I want to touch on too is role play. So consistently, the people who are on role play um, are people who are converting at a high level. I can literally correlate all of your attendance to your conversion rates. I literally can do that, which is, and I know that it doesn't, it's not always fun and role play is super boring and nobody likes it. And I get that. But the, it's just like going to the gym. And I, I know that we sound like a broken record. Jeremy has talked a lot about this on huddles as well. But the more that you practice, the better that you'll be so you can crush every appointment that you go on. The worst thing you can do is do all this work and finally get in front of somebody and then bomb just because you didn't practice enough. You already did the hard part. You found somebody who wanted to talk to you. So the reason that we that we require so much role play and we want you guys to do this is we want you guys to close as many deals as you can. We want you to make the money you want to make. So show up to role play. If you have one resolution for the year, I would love to see more people on role play because it's truly the people who are always on are the people who we hear get better over time and who have higher conversion rates. So just some things to keep in mind.